Hi all, I'm Avni, I work with Informatica GCF and in this presentation we're going to go ahead and talk about JBoss Caching. JBoss Caching is used within MDM to maintain the metadata cache of the product. The advantages of using JBoss Cache is it allows us to maintain a global cache and have this cache, cache synchronized among all the nodes that are there within a cluster. Saying that I'm going to go ahead and move to the next slide in which we're going to talk briefly about all the all the topics that we're going to discuss in this presentation. So as I said, right, MDM 9.1 onwards, that is MDM 9.1, MDM 9.5.1, we have started using JBoss Cache to maintain the product metadata cache. It helps us in keeping the cache of the product in sync across cluster nodes. You know, the other important thing to note is JBoss Cache is not meant just for JBoss application servers. So if you have installed MDM on WebLogic, WebSphere, we are going to use JBoss Cache internally to maintain the product metadata cache. I would also like to highlight that within the cache we got several modes for replication. We got local. You can use local when you have a single server deployment. You are not using a cache. You can choose to have a sync based replication mode when you are in a cluster or you could choose to be on an async based communication for our cache when you are in a cluster. We highly recommend that you are always on a sync mode because you, you know your cache should always be in sync especially when you are doing all these metadata changes during the initial phases of development and all. And uh, just in case I am also going to talk about briefly how you can troubleshoot these issues so I would recommend that if you have not gone through the uh, one of the other uh, support videos that we have about JBoss cluster. I would request you to specifically go through JBoss cluster part two, where we're talking about you know how to troubleshoot a cluster, and the same concept gets applied here as well, because JBoss cache internally uses JGroups to communicate with each node to keep the cache in sync. All right. Uh, in the next slide, we're just talking about the options of protocols that are available for JBoss caching. You can either choose UDP, which is there by default, or you could choose to switch the communication of the caching to TCP. Okay, so I'm not going to go ahead and uh, log in on my Linux session. So in here, I already have MDM deployed. So I already have the Informatica home directory, and under resources, I'm going to see this configuration file that MDM uses for JBoss caching. By default, the MDM comes with, as I said, UDP-based protocol in a sync mode. So this is the default file that we have. In here, you see the MCAS address. So a lot of times, people install MDM and they get image when they start up the server, they immediately get errors. So what you got to ensure is like this multicast address is open on your network. If it isn't, then you got to change this address to a multicast address if you're using UDP, you know, to an to an address which is open. You've also got to ensure this port is open. This is the port that we use for communication. And uh, the other thing to, to other important thing that you can note is uh, this particular FT sock. It is random by default, but if you want your servers to, uh, if you want the JBoss cache to use a specific port. For FT socket, you can go ahead and give the start port value right here. Right. So this is about the default file. I'm going to go ahead and briefly talk about, as I said, replication modes. So replication modes are basically, you know, what mode you use for cache to get in sync. But the point is, if you are not on a cluster, do I need a replication mode? The answer is no. So in that case. You can simply just delete the whole clustering tag from this line to right here, and uh, you know not worry about this multicast address, not worry about this this port being open. So if you are on a single node, you don't have a cluster in your environment, you don't need to maintain this clustering tag. But if you are on a cluster, you got to ensure if you are using UDP, this address is open, or else you change this value to an to an IP which is open for multicast and you choose the right port. You also have an option to use TCP based protocol which I'm going to talk about in a bit. 
The second option, the third replication mode that you have is called async. So synchronous mode of communication is that, you know, when a change happens, let's say a metadata change happens in MDM on node 1. So node 1, on node 1, JBoss Cache is going to go ahead and apply that change, but it's going to send a request to the cluster member to apply that change as well. And it's going to wait till the time that cluster member applies the change and acknowledges it acknowledges back so there's a complete two-way handshake so you tell them you gotta apply this change and then you wait for them to acknowledge and then send a message back that yes I've applied the change and once it has acknowledged back that's when the replication and the the transaction within JBoss cache is, is deemed successful otherwise it's gonna throw you an error saying replication timeout or could not acquire a lock on that node okay so we generally recommend using sync mode but if you ever want to choose to go on an async mode I'm just going to show you a quick sample all you got to do is comment this out and input the async mode other than that there's no other change required all right so as I said right we were talking about UDP being the default port but I also talked about an option that you could choose you could choose to switch the communication protocol from UDP to TCP so in here I have an example of using TCP with gossip router so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open that file this is the default file that I'm using right now I'm actually using a gossip router for my cache as well so in this file you see I have my mode as sync in here of UDP, I've defined TCP and I've given a start port. Out here, I have gone ahead and placed this entry for TCP gossip where I'm mentioning what are the initial hosts. So I've got two hosts. Is are these the these the node addresses? The answer is no. These are the gossip routers. This is the primary gossip router. This is the secondary. So the first goes down. The communication switches to the secondary gossip router. It's it's more of a HA based uh, you know cluster communication because uh, you know this way if if one of the gossip router is going down it's automatically switching over to the second gossip router so that the nodes can successfully communicate. If I wasn't using a gossip router, I would have just placed a TCP entry here, not have gossip here, and in the initial host. I would have given the addresses of each node that were there in the cluster along with the port values. The other downside of that is the more and more nodes you add, you gotta go ahead and expand this list on each node, right? So with gossip router, I don't need to do that. I can add more nodes, I can just tell them to join this gossip router to join a specific cluster. So this is the change that you have to do for TCP. Again, if you see, I've, in here, I'm actually using a start port. With TCP, it's a, it's kind of a recommendation. You use a start port. It's, it's more of a you know stable communication. Like when you start your server, this is the first port it goes to. So it's more stable because sometimes if you don't choose this, it could choose a random port and that random port could be blocked. So in cases where you have firewalls and all and you have dedicated ports open, it's always recommended to give a specific start port value. Okay, so this was about the configuration of JBoss Cache that MDM uses. So whenever you change this file, you always have to restart MDM. You always got to restart the the actual uh, app server node. Could it be? It could be JBoss. It could be WebLogic. It could be WebSphere. So you got to go ahead and start that JDM for that change to take effect. I'm gonna go ahead and talk a bit more on how to troubleshoot these cluster related issues. So for this. I'm going to go ahead and go into one of my other Linux sessions where uh, I'm going to go into the con directory. In here, I got a file called jboss block for j.xml. And remember, as I said, right, jboss cache uses jgroups internally to communicate. So what I can do is I can go and do a lookup for cluster tag. This is the tag. This is the one I'm interested in. And in, in here, I can choose to put this category for all J groups, put the value as trace, and then I can choose 
to out have Gboss cache here and have this set to debug. Now all the logging related to cache and groups will start getting logged into cluster.log. So if, for example, if you're seeing that your that your cache is not getting synced, even though it's in the sync mode, or you're seeing a lot of replication timeout errors, you're seeing uh, uh, FQN cannot acquire a lock on a node related errors. This this specific logging is very useful. The advantage is that you're only directing the JGroup and cache related logs to this file. So in that case, you don't need to go to a huge log file which has all the other categories and try to dig in and find the lines that you're interested in. This way, you, you, you're you specifically telling that these are the categories that I'm interested in. Go ahead and put their output in here. And if you actually go in the log directory now, going to see it's, it's, it's actually printing all the information for you it's, just, it's showing you how it's communicating to each node you know whether the messages for replication received or sent have been successful or not you could see errors related to timeout socket close exceptions so this is very useful if you're seeing issues with JBoss cache and note that MDM 91 onwards we use JBoss cache to maintain our product metadata cache it, it's, a, it's a global cache strategy that we have so that when you are in a cluster we ensure with the help of JBoss cache that the cache of the product is synchronized across all the nodes thank you all saying that I'll end this session and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead into the next site so if you go on the Red Hat side you'll find a lot of useful information on JBoss cache you know all that configuration file that we had a look on what each individual attribute means you know you can read those information on the Red Hat site and as always we would welcome your feedback on support videos at informatica.com or you could also go ahead and tweet about it thank you all thanks for listening thank you